Hi there, everybody. I thought I'd do a video on my uh, results from swapping a catalytic converter into an otherwise high performance street slash um, track day um, normally aspirated car. So, this is a picture of the engine compartment of my Mark I uh, Golf GTI or Volkswagen Rabbit GTI, I should say, because the US version. Um, and it's a 2.1 liter um, normally aspirated uh, four cylinder with uh, 11 and a half to one compression ratio and 288 duration cams with a 105 um, degree overlap, so fairly tight overlap. And um, it idles well with these ITVs, these individual throttle bodies. Um, when I put the air box on it and the large air filter, I get clean air, obviously, for street use and uh, engine longevity, but it does interfere slightly with the uh, airflow characteristics around the trumpets, the intake trumpets, so um, it's a bit of a compromise. The engine was dynoed with you know various combinations, including the air box being in and off, and it produced its maximum power of um, 205 horsepower at the wheels um, with the air box off and it was down around 10 horsepower with the air box in so anyway and that's with no cat so I'm just gonna skip through some photos here so this is the engine before I polished the, the exhaust header and, and finished building everything but the exhaust system um, comprised of um, these very large, this is one and three quarter inch diameter primary tubes. So it's a long race header. This is big for a two liter engine, but uh, at maximum RPM, it's going to produce a lot of power. It's going to hurt a little bit on the low end. Um, here are some of the other components. So this is the te Tectonics two and a half inch primary exhaust pipe. So this um, has its uh, resonator built in. And then this end here goes to the back and connects to a muffler. So what I had is um, two options. I had a catalytic converter with a flex pipe, and then I had a, a vibrant uh, stainless resonator um, with a flex pipe as an alternative. And then a Borla, uh, it's a muffler, but it's a straight through resonator as well. Um, so there was no baffles anywhere. It was just all straight through or is straight through. Um, this is the installed so the race header coming down from the engine through a flex pipe into the vibrant um, uh, resonator and then on through the tectonics resonator and then onto the borla muffler and then the alternative to that is uh, it's flipped around the opposite way just because of the way the cat works and how it is installed for clearance um, but it, that's the tectonics high flow uh, catalytic converter uh, in, in, instead of the vibrant. And then after the tectonics um, resonator goes into the, to the muffler. Um, so what I've done is I've, I've got a chart here which is showing the power of the car with, um, and, with and without the catalytic converter. And um, so you'll see with the race engine, the blue line is the torque curve. I'm sorry, uh, the gray line is the torque curve, and it's a bit bumpy. It produces almost no power down low, and then at about 2,500 RPM, it surges dramatically to a, to a torque peak at 3,200 RPM, and then eventually to another torque peak up at 6,000 plus. So this is when the cam's really working, and this is an artifact of the headers and the exhaust system creating this resonant peak here, which actually corresponds with a sort of a groaning resonance in the car uh, at highway speeds anyway. When you're under throttle down here, it uh, howls a little bit, and not that pleasant. And so the power curve, and this is again with the air box installed, the power curve shows that the, the engine, I think looking down here, the peak power is 235 horsepower. It's closer to 250 without the air box. And this is based on a, um, a brake specific fuel consumption value of 0.42 pounds per horsepower per hour. 
Um, that's estimated, but I have had it on the dyno and, and, and this matches up nicely. You might find a Formula One or a very highly optimized race engine down in the high 0 0.39, 0 0.38. Um, and then a garden variety um, street car around 0 0.5 or 0 0.48, but high performance cars would dip down to about 0.45. And I have a very finely tuned car that's producing over 100 horsepower per liter of displacement, normally aspirated. Um, it's quite high volumetric proficiency, so and uh, that boils down to 0.42 being basically the right number. So what I'm doing is I'm taking, I'll flip over to my Holly ECU. This is a um, just my, my base fuel table. Now, the way it works is, so this is RPM, you know, up to 8,000 plus, and then this is manifold vacuum. And so these are all the fuel flow pound per hour numbers. Really what happens, what matters is this graph here. This is the air fuel target ratio. So the exhaust system has the wideband O2 sensor in it. And it's looking for tuning to, to these numbers. And because I have a race cam that sucks raw air in through the intake and right through the exhaust system at idle, it tends to show artificially lean. So I have to actually talk, if I want 14.7 idle, at 1,000 RPM, I really have to set it close to the 16 and a half. And at full throttle, we want the car to be in this 13.2 range. So on the dyno, this is where it produced maximum power is 13.2 to 1. So pretty much everywhere it's running stoichiometric, which is the ideal mix of air and fuel to create just water and carbon dioxide. And that's 14.7 to 1 is stoichiometric. And so that's what all cars with catalytic converters would, would target, except at full throttle where cars want to be ripped up a little bit. So basically ignore the left-hand side here and assume that this whole thing is actually 14.7, except at full throttle where it will, will rich up to 13.2. And then that creates a learn table. So the learn table is zero right now here because I've transferred everything over to the base fuel. But as I drive the car, it's constantly tuning it and it's modifying these numbers here. So a couple things that I've changed to make it catalytic convert friendly. One is I am running it a little leaner out in idle than I was before. And then two, I'm actually running down in here where I'm completely, you know, in that sort of decel mode. I'm I'm basically running zero in this area here. And um, so it works well. I take my foot off the throttle and I end up with zero fuel flow and it cools the cats down and at full throttle um, the catalytic converter runs hotter and uh, at part throttle it runs so part throttle it's running in the sort of 600 degree Fahrenheit outside case temperature range when it cools down obviously when you think you're in a decel mode it'll drop down to 500 or lower and at full throttle it might get up to 750 degrees Fahrenheit um, case temperature so I've actually had to insulate the um, underside of the car a bit more because of that. It produces more heat. The exhaust system gets hotter for sure. Anyway, you take the numbers here at full throttle and you then drop them into your Excel spreadsheet and then you can calculate out what your, your actual horsepower and torque numbers are. So what did we find? We found that below 4,500 RPM, if you average all of the power or torque numbers, the catalytic converter equipped car produces 11% more power. Okay, so in this range, this graph here, other than this little bump here, we're producing more power on average, up to 40% more power down low here with the catalytic converter. And then we're losing an average of 7% in the upper RPM ranges. So instead of this engine producing 235 horsepower, it's producing around 220. Um, so how does it feel? It definitely does feel stronger in the lower end and it definitely feels a little less exciting in the top end. You're not getting this sort of these two torque bumps that you can feel as much. You're getting a much more linear curve, but that's a beautiful torque curve with the cat converter. This thing is, is almost flat, you know, 150 plus foot pounds of torque all the way through to red line which makes the engine incredibly tractable. It's like lots of power down low. Um, I mean, this is the race cams. Without a race cam, this would extend further here. Um, 
But with the race cams, once you're once you're above 23, 2400 RPM, you end up with this beautiful, you know, accelerate, and it just pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls, and so your horsepower curve with the cat converter is very smooth. And in fact, it keeps rising, whereas the the race version tends to flatten out a bit more um, above 6,000 or above 6,200. So it's kind of what you'd expect. Um, a lot of cars, if you swap out a cat um, for just a straight pipe or what they call a test pipe, you might see no power improvement because you don't have a super high volumetric efficiency car. Um, you know, this is, is a pretty much a race engine. Um, but if you had a turbo car, you might see more power with the cat removed because you're going to end up with less back pressure, which would spin the turbo up. So maybe you're not going to end up with more maximum power, but you might end up with less turbo lag. Um, or you might end up with a little bit more boost if you're if you're able to, um, you know, reprogram the ECU or reflash it so that it's it's spinning the boost up higher and therefore reducing back pressure is going to spin the turbo, you know, harder. Um, but this is this is you know acceptable for me because I'm trading off. Uh, it's about half the noise. It's a much smoother sounding engine. It feels really nice driving this on the street like this. So, you know, yeah, I can take the airbox off and take the cat converter off and end up with a much wilder engine. But it's tiring if you do that. It's loud. Everybody kind of notices you. And, uh, you know, you kind of feel like you're a bit of an asshole sometimes when you drive around with a car like that. So, uh, yeah, this is a lot more stealth and a lot more, a lot more sort of low, low profile, uh, more of a street car. And the car doesn't stink. And a lot of people with these race cams they uh, they really do have, suffer from a rich smelling exhaust and uh, you know everybody smells your car and goes oh it's a stinky car so this is a nice um, this is a nice way to go so yeah I thought people might find this interesting and um, I will end the video there <laughs>